thank you samresh and uh, thank you. once again thank kumar because every time i come to this course it's always a pleasure being in this course and uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's a pleasure for all of us these are my financial interest just to show you that these are the silicon lenses which uh, we used to use a long time back and you know, on the silicon lenses used to crack you can see this is a multifocal lens which cracked you can see here obviously these lenses have to be explanted and this again a haptic which is coming off and uh, uh, which is uh, uh, in a, in, a, in a single piece acrisop lenses Uh, the mi60 lenses when they came into the market about 2005 i think i remember right and they didn't have a proper injector and you can see only the half the lens that is the mi30 lens came into the eye and you can see that half the lens came because these are all very tight injectors and they were not meant for the lens these are not the what you call the 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 custom made for the lenses as well and that is the problem with these injectors again the crystal lenses is also a silicon lens and this crystal lens patient came all the way from coimbatore because at that time in 2009 uh, i was doing the largest number of crystal lenses in chennai here and you can see here, this crystal lens you can see here, only the crystal came and the lens came out you can see here the the the, the broke again okay. so that's because uh, you took a coimbatore patient <laughs> that is because they, they, they said that in i foundation they were not doing crystal lens they came all the way from coimbatore to chennai and nine people were watching the tv okay the live surgery and what i have to do i have to explain obviously this crystal lens at that time i switch off the tv and then i put the crystal lens again this is one of the most important problems but overlooked by many of us uh, your ot assistant catches the center of the optic don't allow your macpherson forceps or any forceps to touch whether it's a monofocal lens or a multifocal lens or whatever it is see this is what will happen this crack i thought it is a small crack it is not actually a crack actually it is a mark on the lens it is an acrylic acrylic lens this can happen with any lens but i'm just telling you but this patient because it is right in the visual axis this patient became very very symptomatic because of the glare and the and the polyopsia and the night glare and a lot of problems she sued me actually she went to another ophthalmologist and that, that, that ophthalmologist said there are two cracks one crack is in the lens another crack is a surgeon who operated on you so this again see this is a preloaded lenses you have to be very very careful about this preloaded lens because you do not know what's happening inside this preloaded lenses you can see here this optic is uh, coming uh, uh, there there are no haptics at all the haptics are completely missing in this where are the haptics the haptics are coming later you can see here the haptics are coming later and this is the problem so especially when the preloaded lenses when the when the the take home message is that when the injector is very tight when there is lot of resistance while injecting the lenses for heaven sake don't inject these lenses because these lenses are likely to have some some problem and we can have we can see this is another patient you can see again uh, preloaded lenses and uh, uh, there is a big hole right in the center of the optic you can see here right in the center of the optic and this is again because there was lot of resistance while while i was injecting the lens and this is all i learned retro, retro, retrospectively after analyzing all these videos and uh, this is a big hole in the center obviously these lenses have to be explanted this is again a trifocal lenses and uh, uh, i was using a medicinal injector for these trifocal lenses these are the zeiss uh, trifocal lenses you can see there are three zones in the trifocal lenses as everybody knows knows the zone 1 zone 2 and zone 3 and three because this uh, this is a uh, uh, very typically a trifocal lens and you can see here and obviously these lenses have to come out as well again a single piece uh, agrisoft lenses the haptic is uh, cut off uh, and uh, i try to um, uh, explant this lens uh, these lenses have to be explanted there are many people because i they referred the other surgeons referring to me uh, with a with a single haptic don't leave the single haptic i was uh, i was just talking in the previous course also about one hour back and they said you can leave it with a haptic with the lens is centered the lens will appear centered on the table but you have to remove it you can see here how i am removing it and bringing it out and then cutting it here into into the thing there are different ways of removing but more importantly you can just don't have to extend the incision at all probably extend it to about 3 mm and then hand on hand technique you can bring the lens out without any problem the push type of injector you can see this this uh, this thing the push type is very very dangerous because the shooters 
you can go through the posterior capsule. You can see the lens actually, because of the speed in which it is going, ruptured the PC and went into the vitreous cavity. You can see the lens dancing in the vitreous as well. This is a posterior capsular rexis. You can see the posterior capsular rexis and uh, the, uh, the hydrophilic lens implanted, but the lens had other plants. Okay, you have to be very because most of the times you are very complacent while you are because you are under the surgery. See this, what is happening? Suddenly, it somersaulted the lens, somersaulted and went through the small posterior capsular axis. And by the time you could uh, bat your eyelid or blink your eyelid, see what has happened. It's gone into the vitreous cavity. And I had to do a three port pass when I vitrectomy and remove the lenses as well. This is again a mistake which commonly is done. Don't use one lens for another injector. This is a supraphobe lens which came. I used the Alcon injector for that because the, the supraphobe guys didn't have an injector. You can see here again the lens came out of the jerk and because of the uh, incompatibility between the lens and the injector. And I did what is called the anterior assisted levitation of the lens. These are the supraphobe lenses with a thinner haptic. I put paste the lens into the same. Again, a refractive multifocal lenses. And uh, because of capsular phimosis, the multifocal lenses started folding into the eye. Again, becoming foldable, becoming foldable lenses. And there was a posterior shift of the optic and hyperopic shift for the refractive error operation. I did a AG laser, you can see on the right, and it started going back as well. The Z syndrome is not uncommon with the, with the crystal lens. The crystal lens, what happens is suddenly it can move forward and talk. That is turn on, twist on one side. And you can have a sudden, uh, uh, what do you call, myopic shift of the patient and also astigmatism and Z syndrome. Obviously, we have to explain these lenses. Again, an hypermature eye oil. You can see here this hypermature eye oil is nothing but an opacified eye oil. We reported 26 of them from a particular company called MDR way back in 2002. And we also produced a film in the ASCRS called the White Wash. And you can see here, these are the opacified lenses, very common with this hydrophilic uh, uh, platform. And again, wound-assisted lenses, be careful, because you need to inflate the anterior chamber very, very nicely, because if you don't inflate, it will buckle. And if you don't push it, it will also buckle. Let's see, what the, this is what will happen. It will get stuck there. It will neither go forward nor go backward. And that is the problem. What do you do normally? Go posterior to the incision go posterior or underneath the lens and extend the incision and try to pull the lens out instead of putting the lens inside. Because you pull the lens out, you examine the lens under the microscope, make sure the lens is fine because sometimes there can be small cracks or fractures which you don't know. You can see here, again, the kissing haptics, not uncommon with Acrisoft lenses, with the Technis lenses, but sometimes it takes a longer time for the kissing haptics to get released. This is another huge problem. This is again a preloaded lenses. You can see what has happened. The haptic has gone and stuck on the back of the optic, on the back of the optic. So difficult to remove this because it got stuck. It's like a, this thing, it's like a glue there. And so I had to literally irrigate, go underneath uh, this thing at the end of the surgery. I go underneath the, uh, um, lift up the optic and go underneath. And it took almost about five minutes for me to release that haptic from the optic and uh, this thing. Again, preloaded lenses, you have to be very careful or anything for that matter, the silicone plunger can also get detached. And this is what is happening. You can see the preloaded the silicon plunger also getting detached. And these silicon plungers are not easy to remove. They're very, very slippery. You can see here, it's very slippery and it is very difficult to grab that with the forceps. And of course, I did it and without any problem as well. Then Envista lenses, this is, you see, uh, the, one of the, uh, any lenses for that matter, these are again the, the blue injectors and the green injectors, this can happen. The haptic gets caught. The haptic gets caught. You try to remove the haptic. What will happen is it will get fractured. And you have to extend the incision and remove the lenses as well. An ocular episotomy. Very simple. This is a supraphobe lens. This is a very typical green injector, the medicinal injector, which is there. And once the haptic gets caught, don't try to pull it out. If you try to pull it out with a very little space between the cartridge and the silicon plunger, just use the 11 blade and open the cartridge. If you open the cartridge, what will happen is you create more space between the silicon plunger and the haptic, that is the cartridge wall, and you'll be able to release. You see slowly, 
release that and that, this i call it as an ocular episotomy and you can release that haptic without any pro problem without any deformation and these are the three eye wells i call it the pandaras box you can see eye wells number 1 the anterior chamber eye well and uh, uh, and then you have the uh, the uh, acrios evo lenses and then you have the uh, pmma lenses also in the same eye apart from that the patient had also a ctr and new into the into the, in the in the posterior chamber this patient was just removed to me for a ugh syndrome for removal of the ac aol and pass plana vitrectomy because patient had vitreous hemorrhage patient had pdr as well so these are the take home messages load the iol yourself use time tested injector system check the compatibility between the iol and the injector beware of preloaded iols you do not know what's happening do not be complacent at the end of the surgery normally you might have done a very hard cataract or a small pupil or a subluxated cataract your concentration is not there 100% while you are injecting the lens and that is where you have to be very very careful and make sure that you don't have any complications thank you very much for the wonderful opportunity